everyone. Thank you very much for taking the time to come out today and attend the Athleisure Decorating Expo, or Dexpo, as I've been miscalling it this week. Uh, during today's topics, we're going to be covering the Athleisure market, obviously, um, and giving you a bit more of an understanding of the size of the market, the profit that you can make, and the ease of entry as well. So a lot of people think that because they're slightly more difficult garments to decorate, because they're a little bit more sensitive across the industry in general, that it's a bit of a harder market to get into, and that's absolutely not the case at all, which we're going to show you today. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about the trending styles and fashions that you can be expecting to use. So Grace and Lauren from Try Drive bought not only their new pieces, but their best sellers as well. So they're going to talk you through everything that's popular and why. Uh, and then we're going to get into a little bit of a decoration masterclass. So we're going to use both the Auto Open Press and the Jewel Air Fusion today. They both have different capabilities. <coughs> uh, they both have different features which allow you to print onto things such as polyester and fleece. So we're going to cover all of that as well. Uh, but just before we get started, Martin kind of touched on it a little bit, but who are Styles UK? So we are the UK's number one supplier and manufacturer of heat presses, heat transfers and heat transfer vinyl. So heat transfers being the things that we print and send to you ready to heat press, just like this one. And then heat transfer vinyl being the very colourful wool over there, which you have to cut and weed yourself, but have lots of lovely finishes and colours available. Uh, we also pride ourselves on the education that we offer here. So for those of you that are familiar with our social media, with our YouTube, our blog, emails, all that kind of stuff, hands up who's ever watched a video of something we've produced before. Good, that's a good amount. <laughs> we like that, okay. <laughs> Uh, so we pride ourselves on education because if your business is successful, then so is our business. If you buy your stuff from us, your transfers, your presses, and you're ordering from us, then our business does well as well. So we are going to talk, yeah, lots of bit about how you can get into the industry today. Um, if you look around the mannequins before or after when you're doing your networking, some of them do have uh, these little plastic tags on them, and they're price breakdowns for the garment <coughs> themselves. So they've got the cost of the garment, the cost of the decoration that's on them, and then what you would sell them for at fulfillment and at brand price as well so you can just get a bit of a feel for you know how much profit you could make on each item so we've got the crop tops we've got um, there's a gilet over there there's lots of different things that have been tagged up for you to have a look at uh, okay, so just a little bit about the different transfers that we offer. So majority of the stuff we're talking about today is going to be our ultra color transfer. This is the full color digital hybrid transfer that we offer and it does have unlimited colors, unlimited detail and photorealistic capabilities. But the main reason we're using this transfer today is because of the temperature that it applies at. So it fuses at 120 degrees, which is a very, very low temperature when you consider our other transfers are 145 and 160 degrees. So this being obviously because we're fusing onto more sensitive garments like polyester, things like that, the first thing to do is to reduce the heat to try and reduce the scorch mark. So that's the reason we're going to be using that transfer. But like I say, we do manufacture different types. So if we don't have to just talk about athleisure today. If you want to hang back after the talk, have a conversation with one of the guys about something that's you know, helpful to you, then we'd be more than happy to do that as well. So, okay, moving on to Try Dry is my next session. So, Grace and Lauren, they are obviously from Try Dry, the Europe's number one athleisure supplier. So, I'm going to hand over to Grace to talk a little bit about Try Dry and their products, and then we'll get into some decorating. Nice to meet everyone. Um, so, I am the brand manager of Try Dry. Um, I've been with them for about seven years now. Seven years? Nearly eight? Nearly eight. And it started just before I came into the business with polyester products, mainly polyester. So our best seller, I think I'm standing in front of it, is our TRO10, which is our 100% polyester tea. We do that in about 35 plus colors. Does so well for us, it sells into marathons, things like that. Obviously, usually if you're the first thing in, you become the, the best seller. That comes in at an entry price of 2.99 carton. So this kept us going left us room to try out some new and exciting products. Over the years, we have branched out into, I don't know, has anyone ever bought any Try Dry bits? Yeah. Um, so we've done printed leggings before when they were all the rage. That was back when I first started. Gone through all them. There's probably still some on Raladeal. <laughs> and then we've gone into, um, well, COVID, although hard for some, was actually quite a good time for athleisure, sportswear. That was all people wearing in their homes. Um, so for us, we really managed to grow within it and we looked at what else were people wearing that could become the new uniform. Um, and definitely after, after COVID, it's still here, but you know, it's on, hopefully on its way out, we're moving past it. 
We saw that everyone came back to work and they wanted comfy trousers. It wasn't just about polo shirts anymore. There's so many more avenues of what you could offer as a uniform. Um, so we really grew as a brand offering leggings. We now offer loads of different kinds of fleece. So this is one of our best sellers, our TRO 85. Do you remember what, how much it is? Six, yes, six, six, nine, six ninety-five. So we've got this is our, I'd say, our entry-level hoodie, also our bestseller, six ninety-five. It comes in a number of different colours, and we also offer matching sets now, things like joggers and shorts to go with it. That's great for like dance team wear. We're going to be launching some kids wear as well um, in matching sets. As, so we're just going from strength to strength, really. We try some trend items. We've got enough room for manoeuvre. We will test something out. If it doesn't work, well, then, you know, we sell through it and we move on. But there's things like, I'd say this hoodie, this isn't your classic fit hoodie. It's not got a kangaroo pocket, as everyone says. You need pockets, you need pockets to sell things. No, we brought this out about five years ago. It's still, it's number one seller. It's never gone anywhere. We've seen people like H&M, over the weekend, I just saw H&M come out with a similar fit to this. Um, so it just shows, you test the waters with um, fashion products, but it, they can become a core seller for you. And then we've also got Lauren with us. You started how many? Six months ago? Yes, I started today. <laughs> so I'm the brand ambassador, so I can talk you to our range, take feedback on the brand, and offer you any samples of POS for your showroom. Uh, uh, Lauren's based in Liverpool, but we are making a travel all around the country. So if anyone wants a visit, <laughs> Lauren has told me she's very keen to go around everywhere. So please ask. <laughs> but yeah, um, we've just. As we're growing as a company, we've realised that we need someone on the road. There's too many, too, far too many styles for the Railwise team to be trying to show everything. They've got all their other brands. We sell 120 different styles. So we needed someone that's sort of going in and talking you through the product. There's different categories now. We've got the fashion things. We've got the sports where we have items that can be sold into uniform, even merchandise. So Lauren's kind of there to show you the different avenues that you can be going into. So if you need any samples or anything like that, catch up with Lauren after, after the chat. Um, and she'll, yeah. She'll love all your emails coming in and all your, all your <laughs> requests for visits. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, so the reason that we asked Tri Dry is because they are the UK's, uh, the Europe, sorry, leading supplier of athleisure garments. And from, take it from me, who prints on them fairly regularly, uh, they are very easy to print onto once you have the right print method. So one of the things I always say is that majority of garments can be printed onto. It's just finding the right method and the best equipment and accessories to use with it. So we're going to teach you how to do all of that today onto like the trickier fabrics as well. Uh, so who here has never even tried to print on athleisure or never even considered it? Okay. How many people have started to decorate onto athleisure type garments already? Okay, and what are the most common things that you come across with as issues? Is it scorch marks? Is it application techniques? What do you struggle with the most when it comes to printing? Pure Pardon? Pure okay. Yeah, so scorch marks definitely. That's the main one. Yeah. yeah, okay. Same as the earlier group then, that's good. <laughs> Uh, so we talk a lot about your standard like t-shirts and hoodies in our general content and our day-to-day -day social media presence but there are a lot of other things that a heat press allows you to print onto uh, such as polyester garments as Grace has mentioned we've got the puffer jackets here which uh, were very very easy to print onto to my delight when I did them the other day um, and all the other garments you see throughout the room so if there's any questions that you guys have on how to print on any of it then don't hesitate to ask don't leave today with any other questions that you wish you'd have asked before you go. Uh, so the first thing I want to touch on is whether you're going to be selling it as a fulfillment or as a brand. So two very different avenues you can take your athleisure brand down. If you want to sell uh, as a brand, then you're obviously creating your own image, your own brand, um, and you can sell at slightly higher price tags, if you will. If you're going down the fulfillment market, then you might be able to charge slightly less, but you might sell slightly more, depending on how you're marketing. So for example, your current customer base, if you're in fulfillment and you've got a customer that wants to add a couple of polyester shirts or hoodies to their existing range, then that's a really easy way to sort of tag on a few items to their existing order, increase your average order value without having to, you know, go searching for loads and loads of new customers. So really make the most of your existing customer base. 
Uh, yeah, so we've got obviously your generic, if you're selling via brand, you've got people that sort of sell your day-to-day -day wear or you've got businesses with staff. So if you're selling a brand, you're selling probably to someone like Grace and myself who's going to wear them day-to-day -to, -day to work, out and about, to the gym, etc. Or if you're selling to, for example, we had somebody in the audience with a CrossFit jumper on for our afternoon session. Uh, so if somebody like her, for example, you'd be probably selling fulfillment to because she will then sell them herself through her gym. So just figuring out which route you want to go down with the printing, really. But like I say, all of the mannequins do have their price tags on them. So no matter which route you go down, profit can be made in both of them. So in terms of the market itself, we just want to talk a little bit about the size of it. So a quote that I came across when I was doing research for this event that I wanted to read out to everyone, I think sums up why we're doing this event today really well. So today, consumers seek outfits that bridge the divide between active and formal wear, reflecting the hybrid nature of modern living. Shoppers continue to prioritize pieces that offer both comfort and style, aligning their desire to look fashionable while feeling at ease. And I think that just sums up everything about what athleisure is, right? It's not just the stuff that people wear to the gym, it's the stuff that we go to work in every day. It's the stuff that people just wanna wear on the weekends or at home and you know, people wear it a lot more especially like you said, since COVID and things like that, it's become more acceptable to just have that as your general day to day. Uh, okay, in terms of styles, I'm gonna pass back over to Grace <laughs> to talk a little bit more about their new products and stuff that you should be looking for more from a retail perspective really and what you wanna introduce into your brand. Yeah, amazing, right? So I brought some of, we've got all the classics at the back, the best sellers, spring launches as well. So if you wanna to speak to any speak to me or Lauren afterwards about anything on that back rail, let me know. But I thought I would bring our new spring stuff. So I know we're a bit, bit ahead of time, but we're hoping April launch, but it's a good look at what key trends we're sort of seeing come in. We always look a year ahead, looking at different colors that are coming in, looking at what other sports retail brands are selling. Um, and also obviously what's selling within the distributors and things like that. So we have kids, if you were, Lauren will be my model. <laughs> So we have, well, we have seen, we sort of saw it a while ago, but we were a bit nervous to dip our toe in and we had quite a positive reaction from the group before. So we've obviously been asked quite a few times. We sell into things like dance schools, to team wear, uniform as well. And obviously a lot of places cater from little tiny children up to teens and adults. So we've been asked for kids for a while. We've been a bit nervous about dipping our toe into it, but we've recently, about two years ago, moved over and we sell in the US now through um, a distributor similar to the likes of Rallowise, but it's called Alpha Broda in the US. Again, they're very big on team wear over there, cheerleading and things like that. So they said, this would be a key one to go into. So we're test trialing it out. We're gonna see how it goes. We've launched our um, TR85, which is what, what we've all got on today as our uniform. So we're gonna do this in a child size. We're gonna start at five to six and upwards, so that'll cover everyone from five to six all the way through to adult sizes. And then we also have our um, 55 joggers. So we are hoping that matching sets, selling into dance schools, team uniform and things like that. We've also got our 601, which is just our zip version of basically what we've got on at the moment. And um, we're starting with a small collection of colors, I think about five, but we've tried to do our research on what colors we think will sell within the dance industry. Things like light pink, you've still got your classic black, grey, um, French <coughs> navy and things like that. And then we're just going to see how it goes. If it goes well, we'll be expanding the colours and obviously looking at more, you know, lilacs, maybe purples, depending on what people are asking for. Um, so we'll be able to cater from tiny children up until adult sizes. We do already offer our polyester t-shirt in kids sizes and we have some leggings and a base layer top as well. We also are bringing out, you can, you can model these for me, Lauren, <laughs> crop t-shirts and the leggings. There you go. So another really good seller for us is the adults crop t-shirt. It's just 100% cotton. It does what it says on the tin. It's not super exciting, but for some reason we just sell a ton of them. We do them all in all different colors. We bring out different trend colors every year, um, but we've decided to launch that in a kid's version. The kids' version is just slightly longer so that they've not got their midriff on show. It's just a boxy fit, like just a, a child's version of the crop top. And then we're also bringing out our black classic leggings. Um, no pockets on these just because we don't think many children are going to be carrying their mobiles around. But I don't have children, so maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> so we're hoping that just by bringing out the women's bestsellers in child's um, sizes, that we're catering for brands that look at 
women's and kids, you know, matching mummy and me outfits, as well as all the dance schools. And we'll see how it goes next year. We always start with a smaller size range on things and a smaller color offering. And if things go well, we, everyone says like, why aren't you doing this? Why haven't you started at three to four? We'll start where we are and see, see how it goes and hopefully grow. Um, and then we also have, so we have our new polyester polo shirt and I'm trying to have textured tea. So like I said, we have the TRO 10, which is our smooth knit t-shirt. This is our textured version of it. So it's a competing product to our smooth as well as a competing product to the JC001 for anyone who prefers a JC over a tri dry t-shirt. So we're bringing this out in about eight colors. It's not only a competing product, but I would like to say it was better. It's 100% recycled polyester. Um, and it's also dyed with cationic dyes, which means, I'm learning this as we go along, the dyes are magnetic. So it means that it sticks to the clothing more easily and that when you print, say, a white transfer on, it's a lot less likely to bleed into your white transfer. So going forward, cationic dyes is something that we're looking at utilizing a lot more, as well as hopefully everything that we bring out in polyester will be in recycled polyester. That's just where we see the industry moving to. So competing product, this one is gonna come in at the same price as the TRO 10, and you've got the winning factors of recycled as well as the cationic dyes. And then we also brought out a recycled, 100% um, recycled polyester polo. Just because we're seeing a shift in, we obviously sell into some work, work, workwear categories. <coughs> and as well, having the knowledge from working with Rallowise, polyester polos are on the up, 100% cotton polos. Not on their way out, I think there's still a want for them in office-based roles, but we're seeing this a lot more in workwear. People want something that wicks sweat away. People want something they can throw in the wash a hundred times and it's not going to lose its color or its shape. Um, again, I feel, talking from my point of view, but polyester has got a bit more give to it. It's a bit more comfortable. Um, so we're seeing this not just in, in sportswear, but it's also going into the trade jobs as well. So there are two of our new. I would say we're looking at these to be massive sellers for us. And then we also have some of our, one big trend, I don't know if anyone has spotted this one in the shops but cargo trousers are really big at the moment so we thought how can we bring out a pair of cargo trousers that is more wearable for more people so we brought out a cargo jogger this is a unisex um, style so it can be worn by men and women and um, it's just based on our classic jogger shape and then we've just done little finishes like the cargo pockets and um, nice draw cords with matching shades and then we also have our unisex hoodie and our unisex sweatshirt. These are 60-40, so they're 60% recycled um, polyester, 40% cotton. The only reason that we are just doing standard cotton at the moment is because the organic cotton is quite hard to get hold of. Um, we're bringing these out in a nice set of shades. We're gonna have black, um, sky blue, the really nice stone color over there, and shades like lilac. Um, we just saw that in retail, we've obviously got these really nice we like to say that we bring out sweats and fleece and stuff with very nice finishes on, you know. We've got our half sip um, sweatshirt, as well as this one that's got nice detail into it. But really big in the industry at the moment is just your classic oversized fit that men and women can wear. So it's just got features like a drop shoulder, slightly oversized, and we've had this on in the office for both men and women, and it looks great. Um, again, if this does really well, we'll be expanding the size range and everything in that. Um, so they're just a few of the things that we're seeing at, at the moment. We've also got, I hate saying scrunch bum. We've also got some scrunch bum leggings coming in. If anyone's, <laughs> the amount of times we've been asked for them is absolutely ridiculous. So we're bringing them out in April as well. Um, again, they're things that we're going to test the water. If it does well, we'll keep selling it. If it doesn't, then we'll move on to the next thing. But I think we've got the sweatshirts and especially the recycled and cationic t-shirts. I think we're looking at doing really well on those. What is a scrunch bum legging? <laughs> scrunch bum. <laughs> bum. You've not right, seen them, Andy. Andy. If you, if you, You've been on TikTok recently. <laughs> they're all over the gym. When I go in, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Basically, um, they're just scrunched at the back okay. to amplify your assets. Okay. And make <laughs> Very nicely put. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
I'm like, how do I put this in a nice way? But the amount, this is customer requests as well. So if you ever see anything and you think, why aren't you doing that? Are you going to do this? Can you do that? We do bespoke orders and things like that. There are a lot higher quantities. But if you ever see anything in retail that you think, oh, that'd be good. Why aren't they on it? Like, ask us about it. We're probably working on it in the background. Um, like I said, we've tried things before in the past, like printed leggings and stuff. They had their time. They went, I think they went for about a good five years. And then obviously they phased out. But then we have long standing things like the sweatshirts and stuff that have done really well for us. And then hopefully we're going to do really well on the new things. Fingers crossed. You'll have to let us know what you think afterwards. That goes for you as well, Andy. To let Grace know what you think. <laughs> I'll send you some scrunch bumps. <laughs> So just to give you all, before we move on to the demonstration, which I will do soon, I'll stop talking in a minute, uh, I just want to give you a bit of an idea of the size of the market. So obviously we talk a lot about how you can enter it, but is it worth getting into? Are you going to sell enough? Is it worth investing, etc.? So the market is on track to be worth £6.7 over the next five years in the UK. So that's not including all of the hype that we've had in the US. This is just the UK market. So if you were to take 0.1% of that, so the teeniest amount of the athleisure market in the whole of the UK, that's still worth 6.7 million. So that's still a lot of capacity that you could take and enter into with your business. If you were to do 0.01% of that, so even less, that's still £670,000. That's a lot of money that you can be introducing into your business, introducing in profits. So it's definitely worth considering and it's an easy industry to get into once you know how to print the products. So in terms of the demonstration, we're going to get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is something called the arch method, if I can find where I wrote it down. So we talk a lot about the different things that you need to do when heat printing. So you've got your time, temperature, pressure, all of your standard application methods. But when printing onto things such as polyester or fleece, which are more common for heat press and scorch marks, so you need to review these four things uh, before you start playing around with, you know, different patterns and things. So if you're printing onto 100% cotton, for example, chances are the things that you're going to want to consider are the time, temperature and pressure of your heat press, which I'm assuming all of you in here are heat printers and you all know what I'm talking about by that. I can see a lot of heads nodding at me. That's good. <laughs> so the first thing to think about when you're printing onto polyester, fleece, that kind of thing, is the pressure that's coming through your heat press. So if you're over pressurizing, even if it's on the slightly heavier side of medium and it's a more sensitive garment, that can cause a press mark or a scorch mark. So that's the first thing to review. Are you overpressing? Are you under pressing um, pressure? Sorry, and just review the level that you're pressing out with pressure. The second thing to consider if you're still getting scorch marks after reviewing your pressure is the temperature you're applying at. So what's the main reason we're going to be using our ultra color transfers today? Because these apply at 120 degrees, like I said, is the lowest fusing transfer that we have. And the less heat you can apply to those more sensitive fabrics, the better. So that's why we're going to be using these today. The third one is the cover sheet that you're using. So when I demonstrate in a minute, you'll see what I mean. But the standard cover sheet that we recommend you use is just a release paper. So this prevents the carrier from lifting when the press comes up. But if this doesn't do the job, then we do also have this, which is a grip flex. So this is a thicker cover sheet, basically. And this creates an extra layer of protection between your garment and the heated platen when you're applying. So this is like the third step. Which cover sheet are you using? Do you need to add an extra layer of protection before you move on to the fourth step, which is the lower heated platen, which is what's on this machine over here. So not only do you have the heat coming from this plate here, you have it coming from the underneath as well, but we'll get into that, sorry, <laughs> moving up your shot, um, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So starting on this machine, we're going to do a cotton t-shirt first. So like the one that we have here, just going to take plain white t-shirt and thread it on to my press. One of the things that I love about the Hotronics machines from a personal perspective is the threadability that they have. So you can see all of the other t-shirts hanging under here and we've just isolated the layer that we want to print onto and it just means that you're not going to have any like funny scorch marks or print lines from the other layer. We're going to do a pre-press to check that our pressure is right. So that's on a four, so that's roughly right. Medium pressure is between a four and a six on a Hotronics machine. How many people in here have a heat press? How many of them are Hotronics presses? Good, a decent amount of hands laid up. That's, that's, that's good. So taking our ultra color transfer, so this machine is set to 120. 
I'm going to try and do this straight. So, okay. Place the release paper down, and then we're going to hit this for 12 seconds. That's on a pressure of between four and five, it's flicking between, so that's perfect medium pressure. And because this is a cotton t shirt, the medium pressure is absolutely fine and it won't mark at all. Okay, so we'll just remove that. The release paper has prevented our carrier from peeling early, which is great. And this is a cold peel transfer, so I'm just going to set this down on the table to cool while we wait for that to be ready, and then we can peel away the carrier. So step one, is your pressure accurate? On this machine, it tells us what the pressure number is, so we can check that really easily. And then step number two, which um, temperature are you fusing at? So straight away, we've gone with the 120 transfer. You could, for a cotton t-shirt, use either our DTF or our screen print transfers, because they do fuse at a higher temperature, but on cotton, like I say, it's not sensitive. You can get away with that, that's fine. But because we're moving on to more sensitive garments, we're going with ultra color. Third one being the cover sheet. So we use the release paper on there, again, because this is your standard fuse, you know, easy application. Release paper has done the trick perfectly fine, no problem whatsoever. And we haven't needed to consider upper heat yet, so that's good. The second one I'm going to move on to do, while that's waiting to cool down, because Ultra Colour is a cold peel, and when we say cold, I mean cold. I don't mean it's a bit lukewarm, I can get away with peeling it, no. Wait till it's completely cold. So we're gonna give that a minute to just cool off, and I'm gonna move on to the next garment in the meantime. So, the next one, this is one of your best-selling tees, I believe, the ruche on the side. Yes, so Fairly that's one of our new ones it. for spring, yeah. yeah the so crop tees just sell so well, they're so cheap, and obviously, just the detail on it just makes them I yeah, they're a bit different, so bit they're different, very, very yeah. retail, they're very fashionable and very comfortable as well. But obviously with this t-shirt here, if I was to load this onto the platen that's on my press at the moment, the pressure wouldn't be 100% even because you have got this lovely detailing on the side and the ruching. So, and also because it's cropped, it would only come up to like here on the platen. So we could swap out the lower platen, that would be option A. For those of you that have Hotronics will know you can release this lower platen and swap it for a smaller one such as this, they all have these pins on the bottom, so you can just pull them out, pop the another one in. And we do have around, I think it's 14 or 15 sizes and shapes in these ones. And I think it's four in the lower heated as well. So plenty of options. But the other option I'm gonna give you today for printing with this is something called a heat press pillow. Has anybody seen or heard of or used one of these before? Nodding, okay, good. So the first tip that I always give people when it comes to using a pillow is rather than putting it into your garment and doing it straight away, is to put the pillow under your press and test your pressure first. Because you're putting something that's quite thick under the press, the Hotronics pressure is so accurate that it can read even a, a bit of paper under there. So obviously that's fairly thick. So I'm gonna put it under, I'm gonna release the pressure off quite a lot and then I'm just gonna pull it down and see where we're at. So that's on a two. Give it a tiny bit more because by the time we put the transfer, the release paper in the garment under there, that will bring it up another point. So I'm just going to thread my pillow in. <coughs> and then when I put this on the press, you'll be able to see that it isolates the area you want to print on and it leaves these ruching details, even if it's on the press, completely out of the way. So you're getting complete flat surface area here which means accurate pressure. So the readout that will be on here will read from the highest point, which will be where this pillow is at. So the pre-press on this one, I'm not gonna fully lock it into place because I don't want to apply too much pressure and heat if I don't have to. I just wanna give it enough of a touch that it removes any of the creases. So that's fine. Then I'm gonna get another transfer. Here's one I should have prepared earlier, there we go. <laughs> Okay, so slightly smaller transfer on this one. Place it onto the garment. And again, we're just gonna use our release paper with this because this is cotton. We're just focusing on the pressure and the print area for this one. So this will be fine. And we're gonna press it down for, that's three, for 12 seconds. And again, cold pill transfer, so I'm gonna take it off, remove the pillow because that will retain a little bit of heat and just make it take a bit longer to cool down. And I'm gonna put this face down on the surface as well just to cool off. But straight away you can see that the ruching has not been affected on that. The pillow's done its job. We've got a transfer fuse, perfectly fine. And you've still got the lovely detailing of the T-shirt. So this one feels cool now. So we're just gonna peel 
this one. So one smooth peel, you can see there's nothing left on the carrier sheet and we have a perfectly fused cotton t-shirt with no marks whatsoever. So super soft finish. I'll pass it around so you can all have a little look and a feel. But that was super easy. So cotton, easy peasy. The next one I'm going to do is polyester. Would you mind passing me one of those blue yep. jump, uh, t shirts, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, next up, the polyester t shirt, exactly the same shape, style as this one, but completely different material. I'm going to move over to the jewel on this one uh, and use the lower heat. So, normally I would go through the testing process of put it on the auto open, use the release paper, but I did all of that last week so that I didn't have to do it in front of you. <laughs> and the best method is to use the lower heat. So, what happens when you use a power platen is that the temperature, uh, the heat, sorry, that comes from the top plate, you can reduce the temperature on there because majority of the heat comes from the power platen. So if there are any scorch marks, they'll be on the inside of the garment and chances are there won't be any at all. So exactly the same process, thread it on. <coughs> like so. Take your heat transfer. So same one, but in white. And then we're going to use the grip flex for this as well, just to provide that extra layer of protection. So this is a lot thicker. Cool our press back over. And we'll fuse this for the same amount of time, still 12 seconds. Now this press, the top heated platen is set to 105, 106, and the lower platen is set to 115. So slightly different fuse times and temperatures than this one, but it will still achieve the exact same result. We're just working with the garment with the transfer rather than just applying it at the same temperature and expecting it to have the same result. So pull this off, let it cool down, and we'll come back to that one in a moment. Does anybody have any questions before I continue to the last garment? Good, okay. Okay, no judgment on my terrible placement on this one. <laughs> Live fusing is not always as glamorous as it seems. But as you can see from this, there's no scorch marks on there whatsoever. There's a few creases here that will come out with a steam. Um, but in terms of the actual ruching, this hasn't been squished. It hasn't been ruined at all. And this would be, if it was straight, ready to send to a customer. So <laughs> there you go. Okay, while the polyester t-shirt is cooling down, we'll move on to the fleecy side of things. So these garments from personal use are very, very nice to wear, very comfortable, very cosy. Uh, but when you're fusing onto them, it is worth considering using the lower heat, especially if it's um, like a black or a gray, because obviously those press marks show up a little bit more. Um, but with this one, we're gonna do exactly the same method with the power platen. So I did try and do this on the auto open as well. And I used the grit flex, changed the temperature. So I went through all of the arch method rules and the best conclusion was to use the lower heat. So we're gonna do that exactly the same with this one. Now, one thing I will note on the machines that I'm using, you'll notice with the auto open, when I changed what was going underneath the press, I had to manually change the pressure of it. Because this is more of a manual machine, anything that goes under here, you use this pressure knob on the top here, just to adjust how much pressure is coming through the center of the press. With this machine over here, this is air powered completely. So it can sense the garment and the pressure that is going to be required and it does it all automatically. So there's no pressure knob on the top here. The second you press these two buttons, providing you've set the, the correct pressure into the IQ screen, it will read it all for you and work it all out, which is perfect. So same thing, we're going to use the grip flex as the extra layer of protection. Cool the press over. And then two buttons is all it takes and that will do all the work for us. So the pressure on here is slightly lighter. Every time you change um, a platen or you change out the size or the shape, you need to make sure that you're checking your pressure. Whether it's you have a dual air fusion or you have the auto open, changing the surface area of what's underneath the heated platen will always change the pressure the press reads. So just make sure that you're checking that. And if you are using power platens as well, they have different pressures as well. So they are all pre-programmed in here if you have one of these machines, but it's just worth noting so that you don't break the power platen because there are heating rods in there that we don't want you to break. <laughs> okay, so the polyester one is cool now. So again, one smooth peel and there's the polyester result. So exactly the same transfer. 
This one does have a blocker behind it just to make sure that there's no um, bleed through with the colour of the garment into the white transfer especially. Uh, but yeah, perfect finish on that one. So, there okay. go. Okay, so while we're waiting for that one to cool, I'll just recap what we've discussed with the arch method. So, the first thing to consider is your pressure. So, are you over-pressuring your garment? Do you need to loosen it off slightly? Second one being which transfer temperature are you fusing at? Are you using the lowest transfer, the lowest temperature transfer possible? Uh, the next one being the cover sheet that you're using. So can you get away with using a normal release paper? Or do you need to switch to a thicker, more protective cover sheet like the Gripflex? And then the last one, which is always the best outcome in my personal opinion, do you need to add lower heat into the situation? So as I said before, we do have different size patterns of these and they are all available on the back corner behind Andy. So we have the 28 by 38, which is the one that's on here. We do also have a 15 by 15, which is a little square one, which is what I use to print these leggings. I was going to do more demonstrations, but I won't bore all of you for too long. <laughs> so here's one I did prepare earlier. Uh, so this is printing onto ribbed as well. So this transfer is exactly the same as the ones that have all been passing around, but it was just fused on a slightly small, smaller power platen with the grit flex, and that's had a really nice finish on there as well. So I'll pass that one round as an example. Uh, yes, and then we also have a 40 by 50 and a leg and sleeve power platen as well. So lots of options covering everything you're going to need for athleisure. This one's taking a little bit longer to cool down. It's a bit of a thicker garment. There we go. And there's the finished result on the fleece. So you can see same transfer, different garments, perfect result every single time. So it really is a case of how you're printing onto the garments, not necessarily what garments you're fusing. So every garment has a solution. It's just figuring out what that is. So as I say, just spend a little bit of time testing on the garments you're printing on. Watch our YouTube videos because there's more than definitely a solution on there. And yeah, you can pretty much print on majority of the leisure items. So there you go, pass it around. <laughs> Any questions so far? Uh, can you use power platens on all of the hot tonics? <coughs> Technically, yes, but we always recommend that you use them with the air machines because the pressure's regulated, it just is the safest option to use the power platens with. We've had a few instances of people slightly overpressing them with these ones and breaking the rods on the inside of them, which isn't ideal. Um, so yeah, we always recommend that the air machines are the best for the power patterns. Yeah, we would say with the fusion, just behind uh, yourself, Grace, uh, if you're using it as a draw, we say no, if you're using it as a swinger, yes. The reason being is if you pull the drawer out, um, what could happen is you can end up pulling the unit off the table. So that's the only reason. But every other model, absolutely. Does anyone have the excess fusion at the end? You don't have one. <laughs> it's just because the whole thing moves. <coughs> okay, any further questions before we move on? No, okay, good. Um, so, d -d -d yeah, so in terms of the arch method and printing and all of the demonstrations, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover today. If you do have any questions on different garments that are in the room, feel free to ask. We've done a lot of testing over the last couple of weeks, so we'll 90% have an answer for you. Um, but in conclusion, um, I just wanted to make sure that you all check out the mannequins that are in the room from a price profit point of view, just to really understand how much money you can make from these garments. You've seen how easy they are to print on. If you, as long as you can sell them, it's super easy to just expand your business that way. Um, so we've covered, yeah, we've covered the intro to the market. We've done the size and the scale. So easy entry as you've just seen, definitely scope for you to expand your business. Um, make sure you're talking to your current customers about this as well, so whether this is something new you're introducing to your business or something you've been thinking of doing for a while, make sure you're telling your customers about it, talk to them, because if, if they know that's something you can offer, then you know, they're not going to buy it if they don't know you do it. Um, in terms of the machines that we've used today, we do have special bundles available. We have two athleisure bundles and then we are launching some special Black Friday offers this week as well. So if you are considering getting some potential, um, a new heat press or you want some of the accessories and things like that, definitely check those out. Um, we are going to do a giveaway, I've just lost our here, a giveaway <laughs> for £100 worth of heat transfer credit and £100 worth of tri-dry products. So five minutes or so after we've done this talk, I'll go away, 
randomly select the winner, and then yeah, I'll announce that before you all leave. So don't leave before we do this. <laughs> Very good odds to see. Yeah. <laughs> um, so do you have anything to add before we wrap um, up? I have a few action points. But I think it's just if you need any marketing materials and things like that, then we, I think a lot of brands that work with distributors offer quite a lot. I'm sure you know that. Malawise have an imagery hub and everything. Try dry things are all on there, but we do have our own website as well. So it's trydryactivewear.com. And you can get decoration sheets on there, which are hopefully I'm going to improve a bit by putting things on there like pressure, heat settings. Um, but at the moment, they've got garment dimensions on if you need drilled down um, information on how much space you've got to print on a garment. And we also have imagery videos. I've got Lauren now working for us and on the roads who can come and visit you, talk you through the products in more detail. Also help you with any sampling. If you need samples to test print on, just let us know. We are happy to, to give those. Or if you need samples for your showroom and things, we're there to, to fill your showroom with wonderful things. <laughs> I would say as well, Grace, your marketing images are very high end. So they look like um, any kind of um, famous brand you would expect. So if you're just superimposing elements of graphics on them, or if you want to do like a pitch deck for customers to go and see them, you just fuse one deck of documents and one garment and then you use those marketing materials, they're absolutely amazing. Very high end. Thank you. <laughs> we, we pride ourselves on, you know, trying to do some of the at night. Obviously, we, we are competing against people who are doing workwear photos and things like that. And I think we can afford to be a bit more exciting being in the sports and athleisure and the fashionable section. So it does obviously help us on that side. But yeah, they're all free for you to use if you want the model shots, if you just need flat shots for you to mock up a quick design. I know you were speaking earlier, Molly, about using Canva and things like that. Yeah, so mocking up your designs before you print them and sell them is a really great way to sort of give your customers a taste for what you're offering without actually spending money on physically printing the product. So if you print something and then you decide you don't want to sell it or it's not the design your customer wants, you don't need to do that. If you use things like Canva or I think the other one is placeit.com or something like that. Yeah, that, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can mock those up with your designs with the Tri Dry products before you actually order your transfers, which is a really cost effective way or non cost effective way to do it. Um, the other thing I'll say as well is when you are starting out, depending on what level you're at, make sure that you just start simple. Don't get too overwhelmed um, about printing on every single product. I know that Tri Dry have a very, very good range and there's a lot in there, um, but just pick one or two items to start with, test out at home, see what works for you, and then build and grow from there based on partly what you want to sell if you're selling as a brand or what your customers want if you're fulfillment and also brand as well. Uh, so action points from today. The first thing I'd recommend you do is analyze your current customer list. So if you want to start an athleisure brand and start from scratch and create this amazing brand marketing, then fantastic. But make sure you're utilizing your existing customer list. I know that's one of Andy's favorite topics to talk about uh, CRM systems and customer data on the podcast, <laughs> but it is for a reason. It's very important. Um, the second one would be, like I said earlier, connect with them and communicate with them. Let them know what you're selling. Give them the examples. Tell them what you're offering and give them a chance to show interest and, you know, give them, give you then give you their opinion. That was a mouthful. <laughs> um, the next one, choose your product. So like I say, start with a few key garments and build it from there um, and then start testing. So we have goodie bags for all of you today. They do contain um, a try dry garment and some of the transfers that we've been fusing here. So take them home, test this out for yourself and just see what works for you on your machine. And if you need any of the accessories that you've seen today, um, and then also connect with your partners that are in the room. So Rallowise, Try Dry and Styles, we're all here to help you. Like I say, if your business does well, then our business does well. So we're here to help you. That's why we're so big on events and education. So please milk us for everything that we have to make your business work. Um, in terms of the networking side of things, we do have the demonstration stations up and running. So before you go, get hands on with the product, come over to them, print the t-shirts, <coughs> take it with you, wash it, see how it lasts. Um, I guarantee you it will last 75 plus washes, but don't waste your water doing that. Um, and then, yeah, come and get hands on with the power platen as well, because that's definitely something I think a lot of you will consider with your um, products. We do also have the 360 on and ready to be pressed. So Martin will be over there fusing hats away because that fits very well with the athleisure garment industry. So, yeah, we wanted to add that in as a third decoration. So go over there and get hands on with that one. And I think that's pretty much it for today's talk. So thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you.